Hey guys, David Dodge here, and today I'm gonna do a quick video on a property that I just got under contract. I want to break down this property. I think this can be very helpful because this is one of those properties where it was literally one in a hundred, maybe even one in 300, where the seller's asking price was actually below my max allowable offer, my MAO. Today, I'm gonna do a quick video on a property that I just got under contract. I want to break down this property. I think this can be very helpful because this is one of those properties where it was literally one in a hundred, maybe even one in 300, where the seller's asking price was actually below my max allowable offer, my MAO. This is super rare that this happens, but when it does happen, we don't wanna make an offer above the asking price because that would be stupid, right? That'd be foolish. If the seller's only asking for a certain price and we're willing to pay more, let's give the seller what they're asking for. All right, so quick case study. This was a house in St. Peter's, Missouri, and I just got this property under contract today. This property is a three bedroom, two bath property, and it's about 1,200 square foot. Um, the property has an ARV of around $250,000. That's the fixed up value of this property. Now, this property had a fire in it. There was arson that took place and the entire property has smoke damage. All the walls, all the floors, especially the ceilings, the entire kitchen needs to come out, the entire bathrooms. I mean, everything's gonna most likely need to be gutted to the studs, new insulation, maybe even seal coat, a lot of it to mask the smell. And then we're gonna have to build it all back, okay? So the seller got a bid, and as far as I know, only one bid. And that bid to repair the property was $150,000, okay? So, what they did is they essentially said that, hey, the property's worth about 250. We're gonna have to, you know, spend about 150 to get this property into the condition, you know, that it's that it was prior to the fire. So 250 minus 150 equals how much? 100,000? That's a hundred thousand dollars, right? However, if an investor like me or a rehabber comes in, I need to make a profit. So they said, let's not ask 100, let's ask 65,000 for the property, right? And that will leave a difference of about $35,000 in profit. That was the plan, okay? But here's the thing. I went and I had an agent contact me who's a friend and she said, hey, Dave, I got this property that I'm getting ready to list. It's a fire damage property. I know you love buying these properties that have that need a bunch of work and have fire damage. Do you have any interest in this one? And I said, you know what? Let me come take a look at it. So same exact house. I went out and I looked at the property. I agreed that the ARV was roughly 250,000, okay? Now, I know that this $150,000 bid that they got right here was a retail bid. They probably only got one and I can beat that because I have contractors that I work closely with and I even have some in-house guys that I can hire to lay floor and do drywall and paint. Nothing major, but a lot of the cosmetic in this particular property, it's the same one by the way, is mostly cosmetic. We got lucky because the fire didn't actually damage any of the floor joists or the ceiling, um, I'm sorry, or the, or the truss that hold the roof up or any of the structure. Basically zero two by fours were burned. It was just drywall and carpet and it created a ton of smoke and smoke covered everything. And that's kind of annoying because everything's gotta have to be gutted out, but zero structural, no two by fours, no floor joists, no ceiling or joists or, or truss that hold the ceiling up. And here's another great part basically zero plumbing or electrical work is going to be needed because again it's all cosmetic it's basically drywall you know and in nothing behind that was damaged so i should be able to use the existing plumbing i should be able to use the existing electrical and you know i actually had three or four of my contractors take a look at it and they all agreed 
that the property would cost anywhere from sixty to ninety thousand dollars to rehab so as you can see the difference of my bids 60 to 90 versus what the seller thought it was going to take is a lot difference it's basically half about half give or take i mean 75 would be a good medium for there and they're at 150 so my cost was essentially half of what they thought now i don't know if they got multiple bids but i'd assume that they didn't and that's the advantage that i have in this situation okay so now i'm going to run my numbers and i'm going to use the mao formula this is just a simple way that a seller is going to calculate they're going to say oh it's worth 250 but it's going to cost 150 that leaves us 100 um, but we got to let the the buyer make some money right so let's not ask 100 let's ask 65 that leaves about thirty five thousand dollars in let's call this expected profits right here about thirty five thousand is kind of what they're going to assume i'm going to make on this deal well here's how i'm going to look at this deal i'm going to look at it a lot differently i'm going to take this two hundred and fifty thousand dollars and i'm going to multiply this by 90 percent reason is and holly can you do that for me on your phone in the background reason i want to do two hundred and fifty thousand times 0.9 is because i want to take out the cost of selling this property on the back end usually i'm going to discount my properties by 20 25 or 30 percent but in this scenario i'm only going to discount it 10 percent because that's going to be my cost to sell because i want to mimic the way they did theirs okay so 250 times 0.9 my cost to sell equals how much holly 225,000. holly is my assistant today that is 225,000 dollars that um, i'm gonna get if i sell it for 250. That 0.9 equals a 10% discount, which essentially is going to be 6% sales commissions to my agent, 1% holding costs, in this case going to be a little more than that, 1% um, closing costs, and then anywhere from 1% to 3% seller concessions, which means I go to list this property, they send an inspector out, and that inspector finds a bunch of stuff, and I either got to spend money to fix those items, or I am going to have to discount my price to offset and compensate them so they can fix those items. So 225,000, now I'm gonna subtract out my cost of repairs. Let's just assume that we're gonna average this at, well, the average would be 80K, right? That is the average. So now I'm gonna take this $225,000 and I'm going to subtract my 80K and that equals $145,000. Now, if I was going to do this through my traditional MAO, and I was not gonna discount this by 0.9, I was gonna use maybe 70% or 75%, that would give me an MAO roughly somewhere between 100 and 110K, okay? Now, this is really the profit that can be made on this deal, doing it the way that they did it over here. But, you know, essentially my MAO, which would build in my profit, and for those that don't know, your MAO equals your after repair value minus your repairs. Um, let's see, ARV, actually I did that wrong, guys. It's your ARV, I'm sorry, multiplied by your discount rate, that is that number right there, minus my repairs i've only done this about six thousand times and it's funny that i forgot that but that's our mao so whenever i calculate it this way to get my mao with a you know a discount of let's say 0 0.7 or 0 0.75 i'm going to get more along the lines of a number in the 100 to 110k range now that is also going to stand for my max allowable offer that's what mao stands for it's your max allowable offer but the most important part about the max allowable offer is this word right in the front. It's the max. It's the most you'd be willing to pay. So let's assume that, you know, we just go on the high end here. And my MAO was 110,000. I would essentially want to make an offer for around 90 or 95,000. Because if they accept that offer, then we're golden. And if they don't, I have the wiggle room to come up. Five, 10 to $15,000 in this scenario. I just basically want to try to end at 110. Well, guys, in this scenario, because they got a bid for 150,000, 
and they wanted to leave a little bit of room on the table for me to make some profit, their asking price was only $65,000. So when they made me that, or when they told me that that was what they were asking, whenever I'm looking at this deal, I'm thinking, okay, if the rehab's about 150, you know, that's not that great of a deal. That's a lot of money to spend. Buy this for 65, put another 150,000 in it to make 35. Still a good profit, but it's not a great profit. Well, my max allowable offer, let's assume was about 110,000. So I was gonna try to make an offer somewhere around 90 to 95,000. But again, because their asking price was below my, mo my max allowable offer up here, I'm not gonna offer more. So in this scenario, I would have been willing to pay probably between 100 and 110,000 for this deal with my max allowable offer being at 110, but my starting offer being between 90 and 95. But I never, ever, ever made that offer to them. Whoop! Because their asking price, the $65,000 that they are asking is way below. And like way below, like 30 or $40,000 below what I am willing to pay. So what I did was I sent them a contract for $65,000 with a small inspection period so I can get in and verify that the price of the repairs is going to be somewhere between 60 and 90,000. I was there today with my, uh, my, my favorite general contractor and he assured me that as a rental, we could probably do this for about 60,000. And if we were gonna flip this thing full out, it could be probably somewhere around the 80 to 90,000 but nowhere near the 150,000 that the seller thought that this was going to cost to rehab. So hopefully this video wasn't too long. The goal is to try to make this short, but I talk a lot and that is awesome. This is a great deal because again, this is the one of those type of deals that happens like one in a hundred, maybe even one in 300 where the seller's asking price is less than the, um, than the offer that you would make. Now, if, if I didn't ask the seller what their asking price was, I would have been at, you know, somewhere between 90 and 95,000 out the gate. But it's always so incredibly important to say, well, you know, what are you looking to get for this property? Because if the number they're asking is lower, sometimes substantially lower, like in this scenario, you can make a healthy profit on this deal. So what am I planning on doing with this deal? I'm gonna buy this house. I'm gonna put the 60 to 80,000, 60 to 90,000 in it. And I plan on selling this property for about 250,000. That's the same number that we both thought it was gonna be worth. And I'm gonna probably end up walking away somewhere with between 75 and $90,000 in profits. Guys, you can do this too. This is not that difficult. You just gotta learn how to find and talk to motivated sellers. Hopefully you learned a thing or two about investing in real estate about the MAO formula. And the most important takeaway here is always ask the seller what their asking price is because sometimes, it's rare, but sometimes the asking price is going to be less than the amount that you would actually be willing to pay. Thanks for watching, guys.